just yet. And then Mr. Gore made a phone call about a half an hour later and said, I'm taking it back. And that's where we are now, Dan. John Roberts, in case anybody's asking, the fact that Vice President Gore called George Bush and said, well, I'm going to concede to you, that's not a binding contract of any kind. Uh, the Bush people, of course, were stunned when he called back and said, listen, it's gotten down so close, so quickly in Florida, I'm just not going to make any public announcement. That's pretty much where we are right now. Quick recap. 260 electoral college votes for Gore, 246 for Bush. It takes 270 to win. Uh, Oregon's seven electoral votes are undecided, but it turns out they won't matter in the final analysis because neither man can win now without Florida. Bush's lead in Florida is about 1 30th of 1%. That's the difference between the two of them in Florida, but Bush does still lead in Florida. If that lead survives a recount, as, it's, as the Bush people think it will, then Bush will win the Electoral College vote. Dan Rather, stay with us now. The early show follows on right behind us. Now, we're going to be right with you, but Brian Gumbel... Jane Clayson and the gang are going to join us on the early show in just a few minutes. In the meantime, uh, let's point out that while the television networks and the radio networks of the country are uh, using a, a pool of data, exit poll information, and other information, have made some mistakes over the night. Uh, the big one being in Florida, first calling it for Gore, then pulling it back, then calling for Bush and calling it back. The television and radio networks were not the only ones who had to back, take some calls back. Leslie Stone tells us about that. Well, I have one newspaper. This is the New York Post that obviously called it for Bush. Reminds you of Dewey Beats uh, Truman in 48. And just like the networks, came out with a new edition, which they called it a nail biter. You know, when uh, it happened to Truman, it was a hunch. When it happened to us, it was based on technology. This is kind of scary about computers and what we're basing all this on tonight. And in fairness to the New York Post, uh, they may yet be right. In the case of the Chicago newspaper with Truman, they were wrong. Bush, it's still advantage Bush. It still could, could be right, but they pulled it and, back. That's and, just the way it goes. And in fairness to Gore, making his little uh, concession phone call to Bush, he was probably listening to us. Uh, he and his people, uh, yes. no doubt about it. Well, it's 260 Gore, 246 for Bush, with 270 needed to win. Uh, Florida's 25 electoral votes. Look at the Electoral College map. The reason Florida is in white down there uh, is because uh, this state remains undecided as of this hour. A recount has been ordered. We aren't going to know who carries the state of Florida, and it's now completely decisive 25 electoral votes for a number of hours. It could go longer than that. Uh, Ed Bradley, uh, there's this talk that the Bush people say, well, listen, if Al Gore, uh, since he's getting a recount in Florida, maybe, maybe we'll want a recount in places like Wisconsin and Iowa. Well, if they lose in Florida, I'm certain that they will challenge them because you have a similar margin in Iowa and Wisconsin. A very close vote there, and they would be, they would have, I, I would assume, legal grounds to challenge in those two states, particularly if they lose Florida. I'm sure you'll see a challenge there. Thanks, Ed Bradley. Now, folks, here's what's going to happen here at CBS. In terms of covering this great historical story, we want to be long-distance runners and all-day and all-night hunters, and we will be. The CBS Early Show with Brian Gumbel and Jane Clayson is coming up. We're going to stick around, help with the election coverage for that. Uh, we've been on top of the story all night. Yes, we've made some mistakes along with other folks having to pull Florida back, uh, for example. And uh, there's been at least one Senate race, the one in Washington, which is, best of my knowledge, remains undecided. But we've been here uh, all night, now going into the early morning. We'll be around for the early show, which follows up immediately, recapping for you. In the Electoral College, all important and decisive, 270 to win. Gore has 260. Bush has 246. But Bush has a tiny, minuscule lead in Florida. He leads by some 785 votes. Uh, that's 1 30th of 1% difference. Nationally, Gore over Bush by 235,000 votes in the overall national tally. We're looking at a very real possibility that Gore can win the popular vote since he leads by 235,000 votes there and that Bush will win the Electoral College because he has a minuscule but steady lead of a few hundred votes in Florida. Stay tuned for the early show.
The millennium is here, and the bankruptcy laws may be changing soon. You deserve a fresh start. Bankruptcy may eliminate your debts and taxes without losing your exempt property or reduce your monthly payments. We're the largest filer of consumer bankruptcy in Northern California. With no money down, we can start talking to your creditors today. Pick up the phone now and call someone you know and trust for a free debt evaluation by telephone. 1-800-BANKRUPT. That's 1-800-BANKRUPT. Call now. Paul and Jennifer, weeknights on KOVR 13 News. election night has resulted in an historic presidential race that is still with roughly 1800 votes separating gore and bush in florida a recount is already underway and it's early this wednesday morning the 8th of november 2000 and good morning welcome to the early show on this wednesday morning here with jane clayson and i'm brian gumble <laughs> and it doesn't quite rate with um dewey defeats truman but you get the idea. Well, a lot of Americans went to bed last night thinking that that was the case. Well, it's certainly and not the case. then things changed. This is really of historic proportions, Jane. Um, what we have here is uh, what they said in the movie one time was a failure to communicate. I, I looked it up. A deadlock is defined as a stoppage or standstill caused by the opposition of two equally strong unrelenting forces. We certainly do have a deadlock this morning. If it were just a matter of the popular vote, this would be very easy to call because it's over and done with. Take a look at the popular vote. In the popular vote, Al Gore is slightly ahead, but the candidates are virtually tied at 48 percent. The problem comes when you look at the all-important electoral count for now. Al Gore has 260 of the 270 electoral votes needed to win, while George W. Bush has 246. And so the problem becomes the state of Florida. Whoever wins the state of Florida is the next president of the United States. But right now, George W. Bush leads by just a small margin of votes, with both candidates practically running neck and neck. And so due to the uh, small margin of difference, what has happened is the state law has kicked in and an automatic recall is already underway in the state of Florida. So let's go there right now. Byron Pitts is on the story for us. Byron, good morning. Brian, good morning. The past 12 hours have been better than any movie. At 12 hours ago, the polls closed in, in Florida. At about 8 o'clock, the network said that Al Gore, it appeared, had won. A few hours later, there were some uh, technical problems in some of the precincts across Florida. That was changed because some of the fouls in the exit polling. By about 10 o'clock or, or later that night, uh, George Bush was declared the winner. In fact, here's the headline from the uh, major newspaper here in Central Florida, uh, the Orlando Sentinel. It says, it's Bush. We now know it's not Bush, at least not yet. When the Orlando Sentinel went to bed last night, Bush had a, a lead of about 600,000 votes in Florida. That disappeared overnight. At this point, his lead was whittled down to toothpick thin, uh, anywhere from 1,700 to 700 votes in Florida. What happened, uh, Brian, as you said, that's automatically kicked in a recount vote here in Florida. The Attorney General uh, for Florida says what will happen, uh, they will make the announcement in the next few hours exactly what time the recount vote will start. Uh, all 67 counties in Florida will recount their votes. That could take, we're told, anywhere from a few hours to 12 hours to determine uh, who's won the race in Florida. As you said, 25 electoral votes are at stake here. The winner of Florida will win the White House at this point. We don't know, right? Byron, you're talking about 10 to 12 hours, but we're aware there in Florida what are called 10-day ballots, absentee ballots yep. that as long as they get with it within 10 days of the voting day, they're still counted, and those could number upwards of 3,000. What happens if after they do the recount, that number falls under 3,000? Are we looking at a delay of, of 10 days? Sure. Who was it, uh, George Bush, who uh, coined the phrase fuzzy math? All the numbers are fuzzy in Florida today. Brian, what you're talking about in the uh, absentee ballots for, mili for military uh, voters and citizens living overseas, they were given until Election Day, November 7th, to mail in, to mail in their ballots by November 7th 
or to arrive in Florida within 10 days. So folks have, those folks overseas have about 10 days. We understand we're talking about 2,000 to 3,000 additional voters. And because the race is so tight, that could shift, thing, shift the vote in one direction. The expectation, at least what the Bush people are hoping for, historically those absentee ballots, those military voters, typically swing towards the Republicans. But because the race is so tight right now, we really don't know, the first order of business for election officials in Florida is to recount uh, the votes they have now and to see who's ahead. All right. Byron, thanks very much. We'll get back to you. All right. Jane? Brian, we're going to go to Diana Olick now with the George W. Bush camp in Austin, Texas. Diana, good morning. Good morning, Jane, from the very confused and confounded city of Austin, which has been through one crazy night. Bush supporters held vigil here at the state capitol for most of the night as this roller coaster race just kept rolling on. It seems at this point that the Bush campaign is saying that they solidly still believe that they will win this thing, but they're going to wait and hold out and see what this recount says. Governor George W. Bush did say early on when all this in and out of Florida kept going on, he said that he did not believe the 